Can I write it? Yes. Okay, hi, I'm Carl Daniel Heifinger. I'm the lead developer of the Flashroom open source project. You're here to listen to a talk uh, which says update uh, your BIOS and EFI from any free OS. Um, that's actually the subtitle. The real title is the open source Flash programmer. I'm glad to be able to speak here uh, about Flashroom and let's just dive in. What is Flashroom? Flashroom is a tool for Flash EOPROMs. Well, um, most of you know those chips as BIOS chips. Um, but uh, some know it perhaps as ROM chips on a network card. Usually those are flash ear prompts. Flashroom can identify those chips, read them, write them, erase them, lock them, unlock them, pretty much everything you can do with them. And Flashroom supports all flash interfaces um, we know, um, which means parallel LPC, FWH, SPI. Um, those are the most common buses you find on x86 main boards, on network cards, SATA controllers, whatever. Flashroom does not care about the chip form factor. So, so sometimes people ask us, okay, does Flashroom work with a PLC32 flash chip? And we say, um, well, we don't care about the form factor. It's all about the flash interface and the chip itself. Flashroom is pretty extensive. It supports over 270 flash chips, 150 uh, x86 chipsets, 260 main boards are listed in our database. We are, uh, have quite a backlog. Uh, actually, realistic is uh, probably 500 main boards, maybe more. Most more main boards are supported out of the box, so we don't get reports for that. And 55 external programmers. I have to explain what that means later. Um, just a short hint, external programmers means it's not part of the original mission of Flashroom to update a BIOS or to replace a BIOS with core boot. Um, so an anything which is not a main board is an external programmer. Um, Flashroom has quite nice features. It works in the environment you're used to, so if you are used to Linux, Flashroom can be run under Linux. Um, it says um, later it's also portable Linux, FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, Dragonfly BSD, Mac OS X, OpenSolaris, FreeDOS, partially Windows, um, pretty much every operating system you can uh, mention. It's easy to port, mostly easy. Um, Flashroom doesn't need physical access, so if you have the old problem, you have a server stored somewhere, and then you would have to plug in a keyboard, you have to plug in a monitor to run a DOS-based utility, maybe install a floppy drive. That's horrible. Who would want to do that? So Flashroom can just you just log in over SSH to that machine and uh, update the BIOS EFI uh, remotely or uh, Flash Core Boot remotely, whatever you want or you update your network uh, card, um, boot ROM, whatever. It can all be done remotely. <coughs> Um, you can do this from a running system, which means that if you have to administrate a huge cluster or something like that, um, the cluster keeps running while we refresh, uh, or while you refresh. It um, keeps running even if uh, flashing fails can happen, maybe the chip dies or whatever. I once had a chip die on me and the machine uh, kept running, I think, I kept it running for one month without a flash chip at all without a BIOS chip. Um, while the machine is running, you don't need that unless, yeah, well, you use Flashroom and, and want to test the chip, then you, of course, you need a chip. But otherwise, you can recover. If it fails, you just go on IRC, mail us and say, hey, um, I didn't shut down the machine. Can you help me? And then we usually can help you recover. So that's pretty cool, in my opinion. It's a command line application, which means you can also script it easily. I already mentioned it's portable. Maybe one additional point to the scriptability. Um, this also means you, um, Flashroom will not wait for user input. Um, if something is wrong or something is, uh, Flashroom can't decide what to do, um, for example, ambiguous chip detection or whatever, it will simply abort and leave your system untouched. So you can easily deploy it everywhere. It's pretty fast. We have run timings and we are up to 10 times faster than vendor utilities. You can do hot flashing. For example, you um, killed the, or not killed, but erased uh, the flash chip of one board by accident. Then you boot another board. 
um, um, boot it up, remove the flash chip while the board is running, plug in the erased flash chip, uh, run flash ROM again, and the flash the image you want to have in there, and then you have recovered one machine without having to buy an expensive programmer. It can do cross flashing. So if you have an ASUS board with NVIDIA chipset, you can, without any problem, flash a chip for a gigabyte board with AMD chipset or whatever. As long as the buses of the flash chip are compatible, but there are only four different buses, so the chance is pretty high. And most modern systems have SPI flash chips, so it's easy to interchange. Well, use cases. Um, um, update your BIOS, update your EFI, uh, flash core boot, update your network boot ROM or write one, mod your graphics firmware, some people like that because they believe the vendor just locked down the uh, graphics card without any need. You can mod your SATA or PADA controller. Um, Promise um, controllers, pattern controllers. In the past, you had only to flip one bit and it immediately became a RAID controller, which was fun. Um, you can do recovery with hot flashing, cross flashing. For example, your friend uh, bricked his or her device and they say, okay, give me the flash chip. And then you rip out your flash chip while your machine is running, plug in the other flash chip, run flash ROM, be happy. You can flash any chip of any programmer. So um, if you have a network boot ROM which f fits in your network uh, card and you have a socket and a compatible flash bus and there are only four flash buses on your on an older main board, plug in the network boot ROM into your main board um, with, with this hot and cross flashing, uh, flash it, remove it, be happy. The other way around works as well. You can update your main board BIOS if you have a self-built uh, AVR based programmer you can update your graphics card ROM with a parallel port cable uh, with a few resistors soldered on. It's all pretty much fun. Um, the design is pretty cl uh, is clean and reliable because um, if people try flash ROM and it fails, um, they will come and complain. And we want to make users happy. And uh, supporting people after the fact, after something is broken, is much more difficult than doing it right from the start. So um, yes, uh, supporting a new flash chip or a new programmer is very easy. Um, usually it's just adding a new line to um, a table. Um, we did not have to write a new flash chip driver in the last two years, so um, that should probably uh, tell you how well it works. The programmer is selected by a command line parameter. For example, if you have a network card, a graphics card, and your main board, um, FlashRoom can't know which one to flash, and uh, you should specify it because FlashRoom will uh, by default say, okay, um, I don't know which one, so um, please tell me. It has a compatibility checker, so it checks whether the flash chip and the programming interface are compatible. It does not check whether the board and the image you want to flash are compatible. Uh, because that would make uh, cross-flashing impossible. Flash ROM probes always for the chip, but it will never read, never write, or never write, uh, nor, nor erase um, if you don't explicitly tell it. And Flash ROM verifies everything by default, I think two or three times at every step. So um, it's, it's all about reliability, because hey, you won't use a machine afterwards. Problems. Well, we do have some. Um, people love to um, flash DVD drives. We say, no, we won't support that because DVD drives do not offer the ability to verify the contents. And so we don't know if flashing worked. And then people would just complain that flash room killed their DVD burner. So we just do not support it. Oh, yeah, data sheets are wrong. Really, really wrong. JEDI compliant means, yeah, well, um, you uh, encrypt the spec and then try to read that garbage and then it works out. Fast means, yeah, we had a chip and it was about 100 times slower than the others, which were not labeled as fast. Standard, of course, means you can use the standard commands, but please wait one millisecond instead of one microsecond um, after every write. So uh, a write needs only one hour. <laughs> Um, it's proven in, in the sense of we, it's proven that the chip dies. 
Um, then there are multiple incompatible chips of identical ID because uh, vendors decide, oh, let's keep the ID and just change the interface. And chipset designers um, try to be clever and they add security features which stop us from verifying, but they don't stop uh, us or any malware from writing. <laughs> Um, it's really, really funny. Okay, programmers, what do we support? This is only a small selection. I'll just uh, skip quickly. Mainboards, um, a PCI Express um, solid state uh, disk. Uh, we support this since, uh, I think, 13 hours. I just uh, committed that. Um, we support network cards, um, SATA controllers, the open graphics card. Um, um, uh, Self-built um, AVR-based devices, uh, the Bath Pirate, the uh, quite expensive Dediproc uh, programmer, uh, a design of uh, Uwe Herrmann, who is also a member of the Flashroom project. Uh, it pretty much does the same as the ex extremely expensive Dediproc um, at the same speed, but it costs, I think, material about whatever, uh, $10 or so. And then you can do use some um, development hardware, you can do the parallel port cable hack with some resistors. Um, if you like it ghetto style at midnight, n nothing else is available, you want to recover your machine. Okay, a demo run. Um, um, where is the escape button? Um, sorry, could you help me? Oh, looked in the wrong place. Sorry, um, and this one should. Purple one. Purple? What the? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and F11. Okay, I'll just replay a flash room run because I don't want to do this on uh, hardware. Uh, well, not with the presentation hardware. It's just um, you read first. You read the backup. Um, this is the original timing, so it's pretty quick. And then you write a new, uh, a new ROM, and it's also not that slow. I made that time yesterday. It's erasing, writing, done, verifying, of course, and that's it. So um, I do exit this again, and F5. Okay, if Flashroom doesn't find your chip, can happen. Maybe we just need, need a new ID. Maybe a new chip driver, but we haven't needed that in the last two years. Maybe your chipset is unsupported if it's very new, but unlikely because we track uh, chipset updates. Or the flash chip is hiding behind some obscure controller which performs translation. Or you have a laptop. Just send us a report and um, we'll take care of it. So the laptop nightmare. I should mention this. I have a few seconds left, I think. Um, the flash chips are so large, so you can't just exchange them. The main boards are custom and extremely expensive, and the laptop is two computers. You have the x86 CPU you know, and an extra embedded controller, that, which does battery charging, power management, the stuff. And they share the same flash chip. So if you start erasing the normal BIOS, um, well, your embedded controller will die, uh, power off while you're erasing, not great. It will hang, power off the backlight, stop charging, whatever. There are no standards, no docs, no test software. And of course, if you get anything, it's only under draconian NDAs. Um, we're making slow progress. We support a few embedded controllers, but their interface not only depends on the hardware, but also on the software they are running. It's horrible. Um, we support, I think, one laptop. <laughs> okay, maybe two, uh, but um, yeah. So, dear users, please try Flashroom, but not in crazy expensive hardware, not on laptops. Um, if it works, please send us a report. We, we're happy to hear uh, about it, and we'll add it to our support list. If Flashroom fails, just join us on IRC. Give us a few minutes, maybe our, our few hours to respond. The machine can keep running, just don't power it off. Um, we can help you recover. We are pretty successful with recovery. We have, I think, roughly 99% recovery success. So that's 
in my opinion, pretty okay. And please use latest flash ROM. Don't use older versions. Use latest one from Subversion. It's reliable and it has automatic recovery. Um, we'll add your board to our to-do list if it doesn't work uh, at first. Okay, Spider World, tell everybody, write in your blog, tell your friends, tell the admins at your company, they may actually use it. And tell hardware vendors, but please not. You must support us, but rather in a pretty friendly way. Um, yes, if you have questions, please visit us at our booth in AW building, booth number eight. We share a booth with Corbett and Flashroom at flashroom.org on the web. Mail us at flashroom at flashroom.org. Join us on Freenode at Has Flashroom. Okay, thanks to everybody who helps, contributes, and self-supports, and thanks to Fostem. Thank you.